So uh, earlier this week, I was talking with somebody who had an issue with one of their projects. Uh, they had fields where people could download, or sorry, they could attach documents. And they wanted to be able to attach documents, but not allow the people to download documents. So one person would be uploading, you know, PHI forms, that kind of thing, consents, any documents that are related to whoever that participant was. And then downstream, other users were going to be able to see these documents, but they didn't want to be able to download them because they had PHI and that kind of stuff. And they were using the file embed upload, uh, file upload embed, embed module, which allows you to see the document in the web page. But um, I'm just going to show you how to do this with just the file upload field um, because we don't, we don't need to view the document right now. I'm just want, the, the, I just want to show you how to use CSS to hide the download link once something has been uploaded, okay? Um, because the issue is when you have a field, so let me get back in here. So in this project, when you have an upload field type, you basically just set it as file upload. And what REDCap does is it gives you an up upload file link. But then if you have, so if we look at this, I just have two, two documents here that uh, just so I can show you. Uh, when I click file upload, and I'm just going to choose a document that I have uh, here as a PDF, and I'll upload it, the file upload link changes now. It gives you a link. And if I click on this, it's going to open it up. It's going to allow me to save it again. So if I had PHI, anybody being able to view this would be able to, to download this. And I can't set this field to read only because then I wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to use it. You wouldn't be able to upload anything because you would see it like this, but you wouldn't be able to click on anything. And, and so you need to be able to hide this download link. And so what I did was, what I always do is I'll right click on something and look at the inspect tab inspect window, and if everybody can see that, this is the class for that, that link. And so it's hidden here in this, it's an A tag, it's an anchor tag, which is what a hyperlink is, and it has a class of file download link. So that gives me something to hook onto to hide it, because if, if, the upload file link had the same class as the download file link, I wouldn't be able to hide it because it would hide both of them. So if I right click on this and click inspect, you'll see here that REDCap gives it a class of file upload link. And then as soon as you upload a file, it runs some code while it's changing everything and it updates the display and displays this download link and gives you these new options to either upload a new version or remove. So to hide that, all I need to do is set the display for any anchor tags that have this file download link class to where they're not being displayed. So I can do that just, you know, in here, if we just go up to, so if I click on this to where this is the last element that I'm looking at, in the inspect tag. And I just click in here and I add a new rule. Display is none. And I set it to important because that overrides any other rules that I have. And I just hit enter. Now what I've done is I've added a new rule locally in this web page. And if I click back over here, you can see that link is gone. So let me let me move this over so you can see it. If I click, turn the rule on or off, you'll see that it goes away. Now, the problem with doing it this way is that it goes away. It, this rule disappears as soon as I leave this survey. So if I reload this and upload this again, <clears throat> uh, 
that rule, if I click on the A tag again, that rule is gone. So to get around this, in order to add rules to this, you know, in order to add these CSS rules to your project, you use something in the external modules called the red cap CSS injector. And that's a module that you can enable yourself. And what you do is you, once it's enabled, then you have to configure it. So I have the rule already set up and I just need to enable it. And you can set it for, if you just want it to, like if somebody is only gonna be able to view this stuff on a survey, you could set it to where they can view it on a survey and they can't see the download link. But if you have access to the actual data entry instrument, you wanna be able to see it. So you could set it for surveys. If you don't want anybody to do it, you could just set it for all. And, and you know, also the other side of that is you could just set it toward data, data entry instruments. It's, it applies to that. And if you want, I could just set it to this form, but it, you know, if I have a form where all of my documents are going to be, but I don't want this rule to apply to anything else, I would want to specify that I only want it to be for this form. But if I leave it blank, it applies for all forms. And it doesn't really matter here because I only have one form. And the important thing is now I have to add that rule. And so to add that rule, I just have to add, I want all anchor tags and in CSS, in order to specify a class, you use the period. So I want all anchor tags that have this file download link class attached to it. And then I have in, in uh, curly braces, then I specify the rule. And all I'm saying is the exact same rule that I made earlier, display. I want the display set to none. And I'm, I'm saying important because what important does is this is an inline uh, style. And I'm saying this rule is important because red cap is going to add rules. So if we go back to this, you'll see here that red cap is already adding rules, CSS styles and everything to this a file download link. And I want to override any. So if they set a display, you see here that this display is set to block. I want to override that with none. And I'm saying none, this is important you know, follow this rule, ignore any other rules. And that's, so that's pretty much all that is. So now if I save that and enable it and we go back to here and I refresh, now when I upload the file, it doesn't even give me a link. It just gives me the option to either upload a new version or remove the file. And if I remove the file, I get the upload file link back again. So this would be a way for somebody to, um, if you want to force somebody to, you can also, this, this will force them to, uh, I guess, keep a document there. Uh, they won't be able to download it. They won't be able to click on a link. It's like once it's uploaded, you either have the option to upload a new version or delete it but you wouldn't be able to download it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking into the file embed, file upload embed external module, because what that does is it, sh it basically creates a little document viewer down here. It gives you the same interface, but it gives you a document viewer. That way you can view the document in the web page. And I have to look into how to configure that to where somebody can view that without being able to right click in the document viewer and save the document that way. Um, that might take some JavaScript, but if you were just, if you weren't using the, up, the external module to view that and you just created an upload field, this would be how you get around like somebody not being able to download it. Because if I save this, so let me submit this. So let's say that this wasn't a survey, this was just a data entry field. Uh, and I go back to my record status dashboard and somebody downstream who I want them to be able to view this data, but not download it. Um, this is how I would set this up. So you can see here now that this doesn't have the link either. Um, 
But if I wanted them to be able to download it, then I wouldn't put this link for them or this, you know, they would, because you could open up this record and it would be exactly the same way it is on the survey. You would just have this hyperlink that you could click on and save. And so this is how it gets viewed in uh, the data entry page. And if I go back to the external module here, just to show you, and I set this for surveys, Now it works. Now it displays in this. So if I'm just working in the back end and I want to be able to see all my data, this is how I would be able to do it. So somebody who has these permissions to view these instruments could download this data, but anybody coming through on a survey wouldn't be able to see it. My question is <clears throat> not related to exactly what you're talking about, but if somebody does remove the file or upload a new version, I'm assuming that the logging tracks those as well, or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't change, it doesn't. So that's the nice thing about using CSS rules is all that, all it's doing is changing the, the style of something. It's not, it's not running any code to change the way that REDCap functions. So all the history and all the logging and everything is, is still uh, working. And really this link is still here, it just, isn't being displayed. Right, I know. Yeah. I just was wondering, yeah. um, just in general, I never had asked the question about what happens when somebody uploads a file and then removes it and then uploads a new version and then removes it or uploads three versions in a row. I was, I never asked the question, is that all preserved somewhere, the history? It should be, we can check. It is, it is now, it wasn't like maybe Oh, uh, four months ago or so, but they when they added the upload new version, that functions like the history bubble, where when Manny just clicked on that upload new version, uh, it will track all of the versions that were uploaded, and you can click on the old versions and see what they look like. Yeah, because they're still they're still saved on the RedCap server somewhere. You know, when RedCap, when you attach something, RedCap keeps a copy of it. Uh, the other thing is that if you wanted somebody to have access, you could set this to read only uh, with an action tag. So let me go here and just add the action tag for read only. And you could set, so like you could either have read only for the entire thing, if you just want it on the survey or the form or the mobile app, uh, you have multiple options. And so if we do that and I go back to this record, now the person can, has this link but they and they can click on it and save it, but they can't remove it. So you have some options there depending on what your needs are. If you want you know, somebody to be able to upload and not delete or remove. If you want somebody to be able to see it, but not change it, or if you want somebody to be able to see it, but not be able to save it. So um, there's different ways to do it. The only thing is you would have to give individual, um, you would have to set it to where when you, if you were the project manager and you need to be able to upload these things, um, then you would, set it in the user permissions. You could also set it on the survey, for example, like if we did, um, let me go back to the designer here. If I set this instead of read only, I set it to do read only on the survey. And let's say I entered this I entered this record through the instrument here. And now if I view it on the survey, um, well, I guess it won't let me know that it's, it's saved. But if you were to view it on the survey, you wouldn't see these options on the bottom. So if, you know, there's a way for you to set that. Um, and you can also do the, you know, the user rights for read only here on this form. You could do that as well. And so there's, with RedCap, as you'll, you know, the more you 
learn about red cap, you'll realize that there's like multiple different ways of doing something to get the same result. And sometimes that's good. And sometimes that's bad because sometimes they're, you know, you get, you do the same thing, but they, they're slightly different. And so, you know, once you get to know what to do, then you, then you have a better idea which route you need to take. But while, while you're there, why don't you go back into your permissions a second and let's point one other thing out. If, if it was, if you were really going to this extreme to hide those links, then you would need to, and unfortunately, because uh, Manny created this, a backup hire, you want to not give them the access to the CSS injector on the right. Yeah, not yeah. That. You would want to make sure that box is unchecked and that they do not have user rights. So yeah. those are two other security things you'd want to make sure that if you're going to go to the um, hide those, uh, yeah. you don't want somebody to be able to get back in there and change them. Yeah, you don't want them to have project design set up and user rights um, and probably data access groups. The other thing too is to you know if, um, you know create records, I guess, and you know you would want to limit what they have access to. Um, well, the only thing that it make a difference really is the CSS injector because that's where it lives and the user rights so that they can't turn it off or on, yeah. you know, they can't edit it. If they don't have, and project design and setup. Yeah, those, those yeah. three things I think would be important. Yeah. So if I set this to read only and I go back, let me go back to the designer and remove the action tag. And now I have read only access for the entire form because I set it up in the user permissions. Those are gone now. So if I had a diff, if, if I set Terry up as a user, and I only gave him read-only access, this is what he would see, but then me as a super user or as a project manager, I would be able to still have those options to remove it or delete it or upload a new version, that kind of thing. And so that's another way to lock it down is through the user, um, user access, user rights. Um, just know that if you do that, it applies to the entire instrument and it's not on a field by field basis.